go. Let's turn that off so we can see a little bit more. And I'll hit escape because these things are about as close as they're going to get. The, the garment's a little bit small. I probably don't need to do much more than just object properties, top coat ref, and point. 5 in each direction with that and I will hit let's actually make sure gravity is on let's simulate local damped so I don't have the inertia pushing this thing around it's gonna kind of balloon up a little bit as it starts to think about things so here we go so we get kind of this this noise almost as the springs within the cloth with all the edges they tend to expand to a hundred and five percent of their normal size and then it's all going to settle out here as gravity takes over again so I'm going to get a slightly bigger coat that should fit a little bit bigger better I'll go ahead and pause this while it does it so you don't have to watch it okay so after letting it simulate local and simulate local damp for a little bit now a lot better and so now what I want to do is close up those seams so I turn off you sewing springs and once again simulate local and it'll snap everything shut the way I expect it and now I'm pretty much ready to go other than the fact that I want to make sure that I've got this the motion that I'm creating here is pretty pretty active this character running you can see and he kinda of hits the brakes and his hands are flying all over the place and there's a there's a pretty high probability that it's gonna collide with this jacket and considering I've got all the the small verts in the thumbs and the hands are fairly uh, well defined I don't really want to use them in the simulation I don't want them to affect things so what I want to do here is in I'm gonna select the actual character here and I'm going to go into group sub object mode and let's go into wireframe and I'm going to select the hands as groups and I'm going to tell them to make group hands okay and for the moment I'm going to leave them unassigned back out of cloth grab the actual top coat and from about here all the way to the bottom just in case I can't imagine his hands touching anywhere up here so coat verts name that one and what I'm going to do is take the hands and do a no collide with the coat verts so that those aren't going to have any more of an effect over the simulation that we do and that's important and instead what I did is I built these just simple spheres they're geospheres they're very low poly not much to them and let's actually grab my top coat you always want to be sure that you're working with the the garment that you ultimately going to be simulating and I'm going to grab those geospheres and I'm going to turn them into collision objects. So they'll brush the coat and they'll keep it pushed away while I don't have to worry about the thumbs considering I've given them a no collide command within cloth effects. So that, you know, as I create this simulation, I shouldn't have the problems. Now, another thing is with very rapid motion, a lot of times you'll have garments that tend to fall, fall off you know with the shoulders or things like that and there's a lot of swing a lot of a lot of motion here and I may also want to go in here into my group sub object mode and select 
groups of verts up here that represent the shoulders and make a group and even though they're unassigned I could affix them to the surface so they'd never move that, that might not really be what I'm after but I can also go in and increase their friction so maybe make it so that they have incredible friction so they're going to be very sticky almost when they rub across the collision objects the shirt the shoulders any other area so that I don't have to um, worry about the the, sh the coat falling off halfway through his run um, which would probably be a bad thing and so again at this point I am now set up to simulate and it's just a matter of hitting the simulate button to uh, finish this guy off here. So I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and at this point our overcoat has been simulated. So if I play forward you'll notice it kicks up and, and reacts as you might expect. Comes to rest as the character slides to a stop. So I get some fairly good looking motion out of it. Now of course you know there's some some things in here that I probably would want to change and uh, you know knowing that the garment is still fairly low res I can throw an HSDS to clean up some of this and a relax to to um, bring it down a little bit um, but by and large I think that this this simulation looks pretty good what I might really want to do is is a top coat's probably going to be a little bit heavier so I'd probably up the density to 0 0 0.008 or 0 0.009 maybe make it a little bit um, more resistant to the air and uh, kick up the the friction on it a little bit so that it feels a little bit heavier I'd also probably adjust its resistance to bend now one thing to note about doing something like that is uh, you as you start to increase the resistance to stretching and bending you can create situations where the simulation is going to fail because the cloth the springs on all of these edges um, is going to try and keep them apart you know depending on how tight your weave is um, and you may end up with situations where cloth is going to interpenetrate or get uh, compressed to the point where it's going to fly off in a frame and you're going to get simulations that aren't aren't to your liking so be aware of that as you start to to create these types of uh, animations but now you should have a pretty good understanding of how you do multi-layer cloth um, getting it the way you want. Of course I can always go back and re-simulate the coat but if I want to go back and simulate the pants or change something in there then I'm gonna have to do the layers in order again so you do have to be aware of that or otherwise what you may want to do is create a uh, a collision driver uh, from these existing meshes and build a new piece of clothing on top of it and use it that way. Um, uh, in the second DVD that's going to be coming out from Paul Hormus on advanced production level uh, cloth techniques and some uh, really neat stuff uh, you'll see some other methods of, of also using cloth as well not using garment maker um, modeling clothing and some some more techniques for that so at this point this is pretty much it for this DVD I hope you've learned something here um, and uh, I thank you for uh, for your attention and your time